God bless you. Thank you for joining us. I'm Minister Billy Burton, and welcome to our new teaching series called Understanding the Tithe. For a long time now, there has been a need and a demand for this type of teaching, and it is my humble prayer that what you get out of these lessons will be the word from the Lord that you've been asking and praying for that feeds your spirit, frees your soul, and brings you into maturity concerning the will of God and the tithe. This series is brought to you by Inspirational Minutes Ministries International, Healthy Java Talk, and those of you who faithfully support our ministry work with your contributions and your prayers. We have every intention of reaching you right where you are, and we ask that you share our lessons so that they can help as many people as possible. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook where you can listen to and read these lessons at a time that's best for you. Our Facebook link is conveniently posted below. Our background music, Tucked in Bed, is composed and performed by J. Mann at www.ourmusicbox.com. First, let's pray. And then we'll get right into this lesson of understanding the tithe. Heavenly Father, I thank you for choosing to use me one more time to continue to teach another episode in this series. It is all yours, Lord, so you could have chosen to use anybody that you wanted to. You didn't promise me that you were going to use me to teach every single episode. So I do not take it for granted. I thank you for trusting me to come before your people and before those who you will lead to hear this entire series, episode by episode, hoping and praying that they get something out of it as we continue to get feedback that even encourages us as we all learn together as brothers and sisters along the way. I thank you for what you're doing, not only in my life, but in the lives of your people everywhere, bringing them into the truth and the prosperity that you would have them to live in. A more abundant life, in the name of Jesus the Christ, and it is so. Amen. If I reminded you that you are supposed to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, the lender and not the borrower. Would you believe it? Have you ever really believed it? This is a promise from God to his people in scripture. If they would only obey his commands and not turn away from them. This is truth. God said it, and that makes it truth. Because God cannot lie. God is truth. Truth is something that never changes no matter what else happens in the heavens and in the earth. Or what else evolves over time. Time doesn't affect God's truth, and nothing catches God off guard. God created time so that man would have a system or a way by which to measure and record events and to keep track of distances between periods of activities to remember. Reality, on the other hand, is something that is temporary. It exists for the period of time that conditions and circumstances in its favor allow it to. Reality can happen to you, whereas truth requires faith and action in order for you to take hold and receive it. We are supposed to walk, move, 
and live by faith in God's truth, not by what we see and hear going on around us. Because temporary realities of everyday life would cause you to be bound and begin to believe that there is no way out, when in fact the truth is that you are meant to be free. Truth and its benefits can easily be enjoyed by something as simple as obedience to God, but can also be snatched or given away through something as simple as a bad choice. Operating in truth seems simple, but I never said that it would be easy. We constantly need God's help because we're constantly under attack by the powers that be. We've talked about human government, its tools, language, symbols, operators, and the machine. We've talked about the modern day Goliaths and the spirit of Anak that operates through the powers of the air, meaning the media, and just how much influence these things can have over the lifestyle of you and your family for generations to come. Redeeming the tide the things that we take for granted, basic knowledge of economics, and even the 501c3, any one of which can totally derail you and send you into a tailspin resulting in a bloodline meltdown that could easily cause the reality of bondage lasting hundreds and hundreds of years. This is about understanding the power of the choices that we make. It's about finally coming into the knowledge that everything that we do affects the future in ways that we could never have imagined. It's about accepting the fact that each of us is a manager, a steward, placed in time to do what's best for a purpose far greater than our own immediate wants. This is episode number 40 of Understanding the Tithe. The title of this lesson is Reality, Truth, and the Tithe. Your scriptures are Exodus 12 and 40. Deuteronomy 28, 12, and 13. Proverbs 4 and 7. Proverbs 18 and 12. And John 8 and 32. Once again, your scriptures are the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 40. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 12 and 13 Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 Proverbs chapter 18 verse 12 and the book of John chapter 8 verse 32 We should get it in our heart that the ball will not be dropped on my watch. The tithe is determined to transform your reality into your truth when you take it on as a lifestyle. God offers systems of truth spiritually programmed to lead you to live and operate in a different reality. Taking a hold of godly truth and keeping it long term is going to require wisdom. But that's not a problem 
when you have Holy Ghost guiding you all along the way. Wisdom is the ability to take what you know and learn and use it in the right places at the right time for the benefit of the greater good long term. Anyone who thinks that they already know everything is headed for a long, terrible fall. What you won't study and refuse to learn now, you won't know later when you need it. I can't even begin to put into words just how sorry you'll be that you didn't take time to learn what you needed to know, especially in the day and age that we're living in. When was the last time that God led you to read an informative book other than the Bible and you read it? When was the last time that you swallowed your pride and attentively listened to someone that could teach you something that you knew you didn't know, regardless of their age, race, male or female. It has gotten to the point where far too many no longer read, research, or even pray so that they can plan their personal strategy based on facts. Instead, too many wait anxiously for the media to tell them what's true and then they passionately go all in on the snapshot as though it's truth choosing to believe what they said is in our best interest. We have become a society that exists and complains off of trailers never even checking the spirit of the writer that gave the advice. Economics, tithing, money, money, money. Is money all that everybody can think about? It's in politics. It's in the home. Little children talk about it and don't even know what they're saying. And yes, it's even in the church. People say that money isn't everything, and that's true. But let's not act like it isn't anything at all. There needs to be balance. It's easy to talk big when your pockets are full, but the troubles of this world will test your faith and even try to make you eat those words, which is why you should always keep God first. For years, CEOs and companies have hoped and worked towards building large followings so that they can monetize the crowd. Even the church has taken on this strategy, and that's reality. God doesn't need a great multitude of people to get his work done. God will show you who he is by doing the exact opposite. And that's the truth. Like when Jesus healed thousands that followed him, then took two fish and five loaves of bread, commanded his disciples to have the crowd of over 5,000 sit down and be still. Then, by using God's system and methods, the few took care of the needs of the many. There were even leftovers collected once people were fed, and the leftovers were more than what Jesus originally started with. Matthew 14, 13 through 21. Stewardship is about managing resources and feeding or taking care of the masses. I believe that kingdom economics 
provides a really good use of math in this example. And let's not overlook that Jesus' ministry was a ministry of fertile ground. We call this miracles, but Jesus calls it works. Wisdom tells us that we should be ever growing and expanding in our knowledge and understanding of all things that affect our security, survival, health, spirituality, and standard of living. The truth is that you and I were created in the image and likeness of God, and we are never supposed to want or need for anything. Reality is that Adam was disobedient and caused the curse of sin to flow through the bloodline of man. Truth is that we no longer have to stay stuck in that position because of the sacrifice and work of Jesus. And we're supposed to be awake enough to know that we can now do something about our current situation. Matthews 13, 24 through 28. If you've been following and listening to this series, you'll know that I gave a list of words and terms way back in episode number 36 called Language of the Machine and the Tithe. Examine yourself. Have you even bothered to pick one or two words from that episode that you didn't know and look them up as suggested so that you can keep expanding your knowledge and economic IQ for your own good and the good of your family. If you haven't, shame on you. Isaiah 5 and 21. The tithe is a spiritual prescription authorized to administer the vitamins and antibiotics necessary to destroy the virus of the curse of sin, which is keeping you and I from living our lives in earth as it is in heaven. God's original desire for us in his original plan has not changed. That plan is truth and the reality of sin has been overcome making the truth of freedom available to God's creation once again. Truth can tend to be painful sometimes, but the truth does make you free. John 8 and 32 And knowing as much as you can about the tithe, never allowing yourself or your family to fall backwards into the shallow thinking of darkness and religious strongholds gives you a much greater chance of living the life of more abundance that God's original plan has for you. God knows what thoughts he has for you and you need to know them also. Are you honestly convinced that God wants you to struggle, have lack, and live in despair and shame? While the realities of this world are meant to intimidate, profile, and terrorize you, what God wants is for you to have peace with evil totally eliminated, prosperity without you thinking that it's a dirty word, hope so your faith has something to work towards and a future here on earth and in the eternal. Demons know who Christ is and when being cast out in the book of Luke, they screamed and shouted crying that Jesus is the Son of God. Demons are liars, but even they know the truth. Jesus rebuked them, ordering them to shut up, and they obeyed his every command. 
Luke 4 and 38 through 41. God's 10 blessing benefits within the tithe are truth, one of which is his promise to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Demons promote realities that devour because they know that you and I are supposed to produce fruit. In other words, we have the truth to produce fruit and we have the power to rebuke false realities when we activate the provisions within the tithe. When reality and truth match, it's a blessing from God. Truth is always easier to know when you silence the noise and voice of the enemy and resist his counterfeit plans. Have you finally made a decision that God's way is the only way to go? If you would like to accept his offer and claim Jesus the Christ as your Lord, Savior, and King, please repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me the opportunity and the availability to make Jesus the Christ my Lord, Savior, and King. I thank you for salvation, which I know and believe that I can only receive by grace through faith, according to your word in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. According to your word in Romans 10, 8 through 15, I confess with my own mouth that I believe that Jesus the Christ is the Son of the one and only true and living God. I thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. I will from this point forward stop doing everything that I know is wrong. I thank you for conviction without condemnation. And I worship and praise only you in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you for the feedback and letting us know that we're making a difference in the lives of our listeners. If you would like to donate and support our ministry and work, please send your contributions through our PayPal. The link is listed below. All gifts are greatly appreciated, and there is no gift too small to matter. We're not asking that you donate to receive this teaching series. You're already receiving that for free. What we do ask is that you consider our honor system. If our teachings have helped you in any way, or if you'd like to support our upcoming book series called When Tithes and Offerings Won't Pay the Bills, please give through our PayPal account at Healthy Java Talk. The link is listed below. We welcome your gift of any amount. Make sure to watch for the release of my book series, When Tithes and Offerings Won't Pay the Bills. Remember to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive notices when we post new lessons. Come back and join us here again next time, God willing, for another lesson of Understanding the Tithe. Our background music, You On My Mind, was composed and performed by Jay Mann at www.ourmusicbox.com. God bless you.